my dedication, which was like the day I was slated to meet Jesus for the first time, I was only a couple of months old, and there's this photo of me askew on my Uncle Carl's lap, and he has this huge grin under, underneath his handlebar mustache, and he was holding me till my parents were ready to take me up to the front of the church, and apparently the pink satin dress my mother put me in turned out to be a hazard, and I was as slippery as a little frog in his hands. And a dedication at our church was the moment when the parents uh, of a newborn baby pledged to raise the Christian and everything that came along with that. In my case, being a girl. More and more, I've thought of my gender as a story I tell myself. When I was assigned female, I told myself I was a girl because it was the only information anyone ever gave me. I struggled with the expectations that were placed on me, but the character I played was female, even if I was really bad at acting. I'm standing on a street corner waiting for my friend who's at the store. And this guy, I don't know, I've never seen him before, he just comes, he just strides right up to me and he pokes me in the middle of the chest repeatedly. And then he says, are you a female? <laughs> um, kind of, I tell him. <laughs> what kind of an answer is that, he, he asks me. So what kind of a question is that? I ask him back, and then I say, and what kind of a fellow goes about poking perfect strangers in the chest without their consent anyway? And he nods at this. <laughs> like he agrees with me on that point. Yeah, right. <laughs> then he just turns and he leaps into a black and navy blue late 70s El Camino and speeds away. <laughs> Leaving me standing there on the sidewalk. I'm kind of like, what the... What the just happened to me. And then in that moment, though, I realized that I have a choice. I, I can choose to feel pissed off that he um, touched me like that, that he talked to me like that. Or I can feel vaguely triumphant um, that he seemed to reconsider his bad behavior, <laughs> if not apologize to me. And in the end, I pick triumph because um, it was almost sunny in Vancouver that January morning, and uh, it was way too early to turn my day the wrong way. When I met people who'd been assigned female um, and then decided they wanted to identify as male, I realized I was allowed to tell that story, and so, you know, I started to tell the story that I was a man, and, but being transgender was different, because all of a sudden, I had to sell my story to other people, you know, it was like, you know, as soon as I was like, I'm a man, I, like there were pamphlets. I was like, no, seriously, read this pamphlet. <laughs> um, you know, instead of assuming that my body or my presentation or gender assignment would do that work for me. And it was often hard to be accepted because of being transgender. And so the story of my gender and relationships was often compromised by people who wouldn't respect my request. And so I started to kind of internalize this and started wondering what it made people read me as female. And it felt like it was my responsibility. But I did the only thing I could and lived inside what looked like a contradiction to some people. I'm a witness uh, to a hit and run accident. It's very dark and raining out and a sports car clips a pedestrian, an elderly woman, uh, and knocks her to the concrete and then screeches away. So I call an ambulance and I, I sit on the curb and I wait with the older woman and while the ambulance comes and a, a policeman shows up first and he takes my name and phone number and address and he writes it all down in his little book and then he narrows his eyes at me under the, under the knife shape of street light coming from above us and he says, he appears to be considering something and then he says, uh, do you have a gender? Yes, I do, I say. <laughs> this kind of long, extended, uncomfortable stretch of silence sort of hangs there in the dark between us. And then he says, hey, there is no need to get smart with me about anything. Are you and I, are we going to have a problem here? His words are clipped, severe like his brush cut. Hey, hey I say, I, I'm, I'm the witness here. 
okay? Um, I stuck around. I called you guys. I, I thought I was the good guy here. Yeah, he says. We can change all that in one second if you do not cooperate with me. I'm female, I tell him. Oh yeah, he says. And are you sure about that? I don't say anything. I just keep looking down. Yeah, he says. That's better. For 10 years, I told the story that I was male, but people often kept treating my gender like it was sort of like this magic eight ball, and they would just keep re-rolling after they get, kept getting answers that didn't measure up for them. It was kind of this constant and exhausting struggle to be accepted as male, and at some point, gender started feeling a bit more like a social joke, because I didn't really actually have a lot of control over how people read me, and then I met all these people who were um, 10 years younger than me, and they were like, actually, we just go by they, and like we don't bother like really... Um, trying to be read as male or female. And I was like, what? And I was like, what are you telling me? You can do that? And I was like, <laughs> but then I kind of thought about it and I was like, these people have a good idea. <laughs> so I decided that I would also retire from the gender binary and request people use the they pronoun for me. So this narrative about my body being something that had like something I needed to change, to change how people addressed me sort of started to confuse me because I, I wasn't really a man stuck in a woman's body anymore. And so unless I was like a gender neutral person stuck in a man's body, stuck in a woman's body. And then that all just became very confusing. And so I just gave up on bothering to change my body or presentation or behavior to match either side of the gender binary stereotypes. And I took the responsibility of earning acceptance off myself and stopped trying to convince people I was male or female. Whenever I think of Ray's gender retirement, I imagine them with like a bubble pipe, like a Sherlock Holmes like <laughs> bubble pipe and like a, a footstool and like plaid slippers <laughs> and, a, and a smoking jacket. <laughs> and they just sit there and say things like, you don't say. <laughs> oh. Seems peaceful. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm out to dinner with my sweetheart. Um, she's wearing a little black dress. Never a bad idea and a rhinestone bracelet. She looks beautiful. And I'm in a shirt and tie and dress pants and a jacket. Still, the waiter keeps mercilessly referring to both of us as ladies. Are you ladies going to have dessert? Can I bring you ladies the bill? Are you ladies? Can I bring you some coffee? How are you? How is everything, ladies? So, uh, there is nothing wrong at all with being a lady. Some of my best friend, friends are ladies. <laughs> but, but to me, I am obviously anything but. And I realize that the English language is sadly devoid of names for people like me. And I try to cut the world some slack for this every day, all day. And the day after that, too. But the truth is, is that every time I'm misgendered like that, I am reminded that I do not fit. I am not this. I am not that. I am not seen. I can't be recognized. I have no name. I am invisible. And a tiny little sliver of me disappears. It's just a sliver. It's razored most days from the surface of my very thick skin. But some days... I don't know why it comes straight off my soul. Sometimes it's felt so deep, but most days simply just shrugged off. But still, it's a sliver. And all those slivers add up to something harder to pretend around. So now when I go into a situation and I never really, it's sort of like a thing where I don't know what people think I am. I just show up in this shirt, I get on the train, you know, and I'm like, and then people are like, hey, would you like some wine, sir? I'm like, oh, you think I'm a man and I'm over 18 or 19? I don't know how old you have to be to drink anymore, actually. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, or, you know, so maybe I'm a heterosexual man or heterosexual woman or a lesbian woman or a gay man. And I guess in practice, I've gotten around to being all those things at one time or another in my life, sort of working my th way through the, no, anyway. 
Um, anyway, even though I'm gender neutral and queer now, so maybe my gender retirement is a bit more like a greatest hit style experience, you know? <laughs> Where people walk up and I can kind of hear the song and as they get closer, I'm like, I know that. And then I'm like, okay, you know, I'm kind of rediscovering all these songs. And anyway, any, ever, after everything that's changed for me, I'm more inclined to just leave the narrative open for myself. Now that I define my gender and sexuality as stories I tell and agree upon, I'm, uh, I try to leave it more open than I have in the past, and I want to leave room for future possibilities I haven't been presented with yet. I'm a gender failure, and I failed at the gender binary, unable to find a place in being either a man or a woman that was comfortable for me. But ultimately, I think it's the binary that fails to leave room for most people to write their own gender stories. any gendered public washroom. Men's or women's, and I have experimented extensively with both, anywhere, anytime at all, every day of my life, for the rest of my life. Possible danger. And I, I tell myself, Sometimes that if I did fit into a box, um, if there was always a perfect little bathroom, especially just for people like me, I would get bored. I, I, would, get, I would get soft. I would lose my spidey senses, you know, my, my cat-like reflexes. <laughs> that the eyes in the back of my head would close over forever and I would miss them. I tell myself that story some days when I'm having a bad day but mostly I don't believe me. And I have to be honest and tell you, some days it just exhausts me. It does, uh, especially on tour. Different bathroom, different airport, different hotel, different lobby, different everything. Every day, always strangers. Nobody knows me. All the head shaking and stumbling around, the double takes, trying to navigate, negotiate this Two ring circus that is the gender binary, walking pronoun tight ropes and balancing between my safety and someone else's comfort. I am also a gender failure. You are free to call me trans and butch. I'm proud to lift both those names up. Hold it. Trans. Right there in the sun. And you would not be wrong, but this still feels like I'm borrowing a word from someone else. It's not all the way mine, really. And my friend who lent it to me might need it back, or they might need it more than me. And really, these are all just words anyway. And words are always imperfect. Words are just sounds we make with our mouths that point our minds to think of things that cannot truly be described in words anyway. I am a writer. I know where words fail us. And I also know that a name is not a person. It is just what we have agreed to call them. But here's the thing. Here's the secret, special, super, silver lining of it all. Here's the thing about always being called words that bounce off me or fall flat at my feet is what a heart balm it is when she looks right at me like she does. How she heals me with that sideways flicker in her eyes. Look that you just wait until I get you home. Look how she helped me, how her hands on me help me own all of this body, how she takes me and then gives me back to myself better somehow more whole, all the sweeter because it took so long for me to find myself, to truly live inside all of me. Danger, 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 ah, I'll be a sailor, ah, right on your body, like we're out at sea. Thank you.
I'm actually wearing a very different shirt than the one in the video. I own more than one shirt that says way more brown tones. Look closely. Way more. Glitter in my eye. Glitter in my eye. It's a dangerous love. It's a dangerous love. We can hold each other up. We can hold each other up. Oh, we're surviving. Glitter in my eye. Glitter in my eye. It's a dangerous love. Like we've never met. Like we've never. 